Hey guys, it's Serial. Welcome back to my channel. So today's video is the fifth installment of Forgotten Favorites. If you guys have been keeping up with these videos, we basically each month are picking one forgotten favorite or underrated Disney movie to honor or celebrate in some way on our channels. Um, we have done four of these already this year, so if you'd like to check them out, I'll have them linked below for you guys. But this month is all about Enchanted. So I do co-host these, these? <laughs> I co-host this collab with my friend Jossum over at Awesome Jossum. Be sure to check him out and all of the other amazing channels that decided to participate for this month. So I decided to make a set of ears for this month, particularly because I had a friend who I know really, really loves this movie and her birthday is around the corner. So I decided to make these ears for her for her birthday and send them her way. Um, these ears I think came out really beautiful. They are very reminiscent of Giselle's like bluish tealish dress. It's a very particular look to try to copy. Um, but I was really happy with how they came out. They're very feminine and cutesy and beautiful. So I hope you guys enjoy this tutorial. Be sure to go check out all of the other channels and what they decided to do for Forgotten Favorites for this month. And without any more chit chat, let's jump into the video. So starting off with the fabric, I found this really light blue fabric with these gorgeous pink and kind of fuchsia colored flowers. The fabric also has little white polka dots all over it that are pretty faint, um, but it reminded me so much of Giselle's dress and it was the best fabric that I've seen for what I wanted. Um, it's super gorgeous. It's sold by the yard at Walmart and it was very inexpensive. I'm going to be taking my ear cutting line template. I have these linked in the description box below for you guys. And then I will be tracing four of these and I just tried to pay attention to the pattern of the flowers. To to make sure that I got um, what I wanted featured on the ear. Also, the marker I'm using is also from Walmart. I love it. It is an invisible ink or a disappearing ink marker. Um, one side of the pen is washable and the other side evaporates off of the fabric after a couple of hours. Now to cut my ears out, I do have my rotary blade, which I've shown in several videos, but I did pick up a little desktop cutting mat and guys, this thing has like changed my ear making life. Um, it was only five or six bucks at Hobby Lobby and it's so much smaller than my big giant one that I use for costume making. So it was totally worth it. I would highly suggest going to pick up a little cutting mat and a rotary blade either from Hobby Lobby or Walmart because it makes this whole process so much faster. Um, but I'm just going ahead and cutting out all four of those ears. My fabric did have some pretty thick creases in it, so I'm just going over it with my iron. Obviously check your settings. I set mine to just like a cotton fabric setting and then did a quick press over each ear just to smooth out the fabric and make sure I didn't have any wrinkles stuck on my ear. <laughs> Next, I'll be cutting out some cardboard inserts for the ear using my foam and batting template, again linked in the description box below, and I'm just tracing four of these onto this Funko shipping box. <laughs> these are my favorite boxes of cardboard to use for this process because the cardboard is very, very firm but not too thick. So it's not too heavy on the head, but it's easy to cut, yet it gives the ear a really nice shape. After I finished tracing these, I got my scissors out and started to cut these out with scissors. Then I realized I can use an X-Acto knife on my cutting mat for my table. So that was much faster and I highly suggest it. Once you have all your cardboard inserts cut out, you're going to start attaching the fabric just by doing a little bit of hot glue at the top, folding the fabric over and tapping it down into the glue. I suggest working small sections at a time so that your glue doesn't dry and you're not rushing and burning your finger. Also the little silicone finger cover I'm wearing, they do sell these at craft stores, Hobby Lobby Joann's, but I actually got mine in a three pack from Dollar Tree and I highly suggest them just for this particular process. <laughs> Next, I'm going to be stuffing the ears with just some polyfill. Um, depending on how fluffy you want your ears, don't pull the fabric too tight because if you do pull it too tight, you can't fit as much stuffing in there without compromising the cardboard that's on there. It might bend it or kind of like contort it. So if you want a super fluffy ear, then make sure that you leave your fabric some slack to fit all that polyfill inside. Once you have it nice and stuffed, then you are just going to trim down any excess fabric on the bottom, fold it over and hot glue it onto the edge. Thank you. 
for the trim, I wanted to do something a little bit different. And because Giselle is so feminine and girly, I grabbed this pink lace trim that I had on hand. And I'm just going to be using this on the inside of the ear. So instead of gluing this down once the ear is totally put together, I'm going to sandwich the two ears together. And this is going to be kind of poking out on the edges. So I am going to just do a line of hot glue and then tap down my trim onto that hot glue. Again, I would suggest working a section at a time just to make sure that your lace is not um, like going up and down on the ear. It's got like a nice even spacing all the way across. Once you have the lace all the way attached, go ahead and trim off your edges. And then I'm going to sandwich these two ears together just by applying a pretty good amount of hot glue on the center, not getting too close to the edge because I don't want it to ooze out of the sides. And then I will just firmly press another half with this half until the glue is all dry and set. So once you've got both your ears done, I did decide to cover my headband. I don't always do this, but for this particular fabric, it was so beautiful. I just really didn't like how it clashed with the plain black headband. Um, obviously, this is totally personal preference. I rarely cover the headband unless I feel like I need to. <laughs> um, but I trimmed some fabric down to around the length and size of my headband. And then I do taper the edges because the headbands that I like to use are tapered on the ends. Um, this process is a little bit annoying if I'm being honest with you guys, that's why I don't usually cover the headbands, um, but you just got to be patient with it. So I just fold down the end of each side and hot glue it down with just a little dot of hot glue. And then you have to work one side at a time. So I am trimming the fabric just so that I'm not as annoyed trying to glue down too much fabric. And then I just apply a line of hot glue, fold over the fabric and tap it down. I'm going to work all the way from one side to the other on this side of the headband and then I will go over and do the other side. Honestly, with this process, I think it is a little bit easier just to watch it happen than for me to sit here and explain it. Um, but basically just try to make sure that you're not working with too much fabric and also that you didn't cut it down too small. Okay, so now we're gonna put this all together. I did lose my spacing template that I have for you guys, so it's in the description box if you want to print it off, um, but I don't know where mine went. So I'm just using a set of ears that I own that I really like the spacing on. These were actually made by my friend Nicole over at Irresistible Magic, shout out to her, their country bear jamboree, and they're amazing. But I am just using that as a guide and then applying some hot glue to the bottom of the ear and firmly holding it down onto the headband. I would say you need to hold the ear on there for at least 30 seconds. My video is sped up so it looks like I don't hold it for very long, but you really do want to make sure your glue has enough time to fully dry. Also be careful not using too much glue because you don't want it to ooze out the sides and make a big glue mess. <laughs> if that does happen, you could always cover up the bottom with some trim.
For the bow on these ears, I wanted to make a really cute layered ribbon bow. I've never done a bow like this on my channel, so it was a little bit of a learning curve for me. But I had this really beautiful kind of muted pink satin ribbon, and then I also have this very thin light pink satin ribbon, so I'm going to be using both of these. I cut off a pretty long length, and what I'm going to do is um, kind of fold this into its bow shape and glue it down and then I'll make a second bow with the thinner fabric. So I start by looping the ribbon like this and then tacking it down with just a little dot of hot glue. And then I'm gonna pinch that loop down toward the bottom and hot glue that into place as well. And that's what's gonna create a simple bow shape. I am going to add a little middle ribbon wrap around once I'm done, but I need to do the thinner ribbon first. So I'm gonna do the same kind of method using my thinner ribbon by making a loop and then pulling the loop down into a bow shape. So now that I have my two bow shapes, I'm going to be using the wider ribbon as the wraparound for the center of the bow. This part is a little bit like funny to do, you just kind of have to take your time and be patient with it to make sure that all the loops are where they're supposed to be and all the hanging down ribbons are where they're supposed to be. And then I did wrap this around all the way and then just tacked it down with a dot of hot glue. And now that I have the bow complete, I'm just going to hot glue that down into the center of my headband. Now I did try these on on my own head and you could just leave the ribbons hanging down. It is very pretty, but I feel like they get a little bit lost in my hair. So um, I'm actually going to tack the ribbon down and make it look like it's kind of floating off to the sides. Um, also a little tip or trick is if you burn the edges of your ribbon with a lighter for a couple seconds, it will seal the edges and then they won't fray but I'm just kind of getting the ribbon where I would like to place it and then I will also create a little pointed end on the thicker ribbon because I like the more finished look of that. And all I do is pinch it into a little kind of point and then cut a, cut a little snip out of it. And then I do reburn the edges just to make sure that they don't fray. So this lighter pink ribbon is obviously way too long, um, so I trimmed that down. This is what it looks like before I tack the ribbons down, and now I am going to use just a little bit of hot glue to keep them in place. I did play with the idea of maybe adding little flowers because these reminded me of the ones in her hair at the beginning of the movie, but I just thought that it made the ears too busy. So I left them like this. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I really loved how these ears came out. I thought that they were just so girly and pretty and feminine and everything that Giselle is. <laughs> Let me know in the comments below if you are a big Enchanted fan. Would you like to see me make more inspired ears from this movie? And also be sure to go check out everybody else involved in this awesome collab. I love the people that are a part of this group and I'm sure that they're going to create some amazing content for you guys. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.